and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're heading back to our Artful subscription box. After having a look at your comments under the unboxing video, it was quite an even split of people who wanted to see me paint something just for the sake of painting something and the other half really wanted to see a tutorial. So we're going to do both. In this video we are going to tackle one of the tutorials in the magazine and probably in a week or so I will paint something just for the giggles because why not? So I'm going to follow the painting flowers tutorial today. I was quite taken by the um, the, the sort of pastel colour palette is quite aesthetically pleasing and I think this is a really nice project no matter what your skill level in terms of painting or working with gouache. We're going to dissect the tutorial a little bit as well as we go along and just kind of assess how well it's laid out and how easy the steps are to follow that kind of thing as well. Kind of all set out here I do have my giant Jill palette that was gifted to me by a lady called Jill, hello if you're watching, and it's not giant because Jill's giant, it's giant because the palette's giant. But this is really good for mixing gouache because we've got loads of space on it, it is ceramic, it is a big heavy so and so. And I'm just going to tape up an edge because that's one of the first things I notice in the very first picture in the tutorial, even before we get to the sketching stage, they have put a taped border around the edge, which is obviously giving this nice, nice crisp edge. So we'll get that done first before we start any sort of painting. All right then, so we're all taped up, ready to go here. And step one says, sketch out the flowers, starting with the biggest flower shapes and then add smaller leaves and flowers around them. Draw the flowers in groups of three can help balance the composition. I think I'm gonna use this image here as like a sort of reference image. So I'm going to grab my pencil. Now we've been given an F pencil. The thing that I find interesting here is that we actually want the pencil lines to be quite heavy because I'm assuming we're going to put the background down first. Now, bearing in mind that gouache is quite opaque, we still want to be able to see those pencil lines of our flowers. I probably wouldn't use an F pencil if I'm honest. I'd probably use an HB. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll go for it. There is actually a much clearer image of the finished picture on the next page, so that might be better in terms of reading what we're doing here. Okay, so the main thing there is, there's two sets of three large flowers, so we'll try and get those in first. So I'm just really simple petal shapes here. So these look like um, some sort of maybe daisy type flower. I'm not very good with flowers. Um, obviously, if you want to be imaginative and make up your own type of flower, then by all means, go for it. Now, I don't want this other one to be exactly in line with this original one. I want it to be a bit more random than that. So I'm just going to move the center point down slightly. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to have the petals at different angles as well just to make it look a little bit more interesting. They don't give you much information. I'm going to shift that one round slightly. They don't give you much information in the tutorial in terms of the structure or, uh, you know, the starting point. So if you're not confident at sketching, it might be an idea to follow the the reference image quite closely. If you are a bit more versed, then obviously you can mix things up a bit. And that's, I'm kind of trying to get a combination of everything here. So then we have these other flowers. You actually don't have to worry about erasing too many lines either because they're mostly going to be covered up by the gouache anyway. I feel like this center piece should be a little bit smaller as well so that we've got more petals showing. So I'm actually going to go inside those original lines that I've done there. So you can see that with me just going through that process, although I'm looking at the image there, um, I have had to do a little bit of thinking for myself in terms of what I'm doing. Um, and that's the thing that's lacking. And obviously they, they can't put every single detail in in terms of uh, of doing the tutorial, else the tutorial would be like 16 pages long. So it, it's in the interests of a publisher to find a balance really in terms of what feels uh, like a good amount of content with things like that. So that is something to bear in mind. And I suppose that's something I'm quite aware of because I used to write, um, I used to write a little bit of fiction, a little bit of short stories. Um, so I am acutely aware of how publishers, you know, about the size of things and how many pages you've got, and how many paragraphs you've got. It's exactly the same with tutorials and obviously you've got to squeeze lots of pictures in there as well. I know it's, it's quite easy to judge tutorials harshly. Um, obviously they still have to work in terms of you have to be able to follow them. They have to make sense and you also have to have confidence in what you're doing and that's where I find that a lot of tutorials miss the mark. 
sometimes because they assume that the reader maybe knows more or assumes more than they think. Uh, so sometimes you do have to state the obvious. It does depend on what ability level you are catering towards as well. That can play a huge part in it too. But with the artful tutorials here, they really are a bit of a catch-all. So, um, you know, it's, it's difficult trying to cater to every skill level. But that's why I'm here to do this. These little flowers are just kind of taking on a mind of their own. <laughs> mind of their own here. Okay so that's the big flowers done now and uh, we do have smaller flowers and some petals and that's creating a nice sort of overlap as well. Okay and we've got some sort of like tulip like shapes as well. The good thing as well is you don't actually have to worry too much about your your sketch lines, uh, they don't have to be perfect. You do have the option of being able to correct them with your paint because it's opaque. So you don't don't get too hung up on getting your, all your lines exact, etc, etc. You really don't need to worry too much about it. So we've got some big leaves. I'm thinking about this space around the edge as well. So I think I'm happy with my sketch now. I think it's maybe a little bit busier than the one in the tutorial, but I'm absolutely fine with that. So it's time to get down to some painting now. Okay, so step one is now complete. So step two says decide on a colour palette. Alice used red and green as main colours, but diluted them with a lot of white to get the more pastel toned palette, which is what we like. Use a small amount of yellow ochre to dull the pinks and greens when they were more in the background, as well as mimic the lovely golden light you get in springtime. So we're going to stick with the same colour palette palette because that was one of the things as I mentioned that kind of drew me to this in the first place. Step three which is paint the background using a large flat end brush and light slightly duller colour paint for your background so that it will sit nicely behind the rest of your colours. Add quite a lot of water to your paint to make it more of a watercolour wash so that you can still see your pencil sketch underneath. Now the first problem that I'm going to come across here is the brushes that actually came in the box. This angled brush is the closest thing we've got to a wide flat brush. Now that is not going to cut the mustard because I'll be here all day on this A4 paper. If it had been an A5 sheet that would have been more... Um, more appropriate I would think. But because I have been getting these artful boxes from the very beginning I do have other artful brushes which includes this number eight which is a bit more substantial. Let me grab the giant gel palette. That almost doesn't fit in the frame look. <laughs> there we go. To make this sort of mint green colour I'm going to take the grassy green and we're going to grab the white as well. Now when it comes to mixing gouache uh, usually when I'm mixing paint anyway, I tend to use a different paintbrush and the thicker the paint, the better of an idea this is because it stops you overloading and overworking the brushes that you're actually painting with. So this is just a little craft paintbrush, this is a Faber-Castell one. Any cheap paintbrushes will do. Again, proportionate to the volume of paint you're using is always a good idea. Okay, that's kind of more the colour I was looking for and I'm just going to start picking up some of this colour and off we go. Okay, I can just see my pencil marks and no more. Okay, so this has dried a lot darker than I thought it would. Uh, it's not dried particularly evenly. Um, I'm not wanting to put any more layers on though because then I will not be able to see my flower patterns that I've drawn in. So we're in this step here. Start to paint in your leaves with darker greens with more opaque paint. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. So I've mixed a little bit of blue in with the original green out the tube and we shall see how we go with this. And I'm using the number three round here and I'm just going to start to paint in these leaves. Okay, okay. Paint the white flowers using the edge of a smaller brush to get the detail of the thinner petals. Use a really thick paint consistency with hardly any water to get a dry brush effect which will add more texture to the petals. Well, now this is a problem you see because if we dry brush on top of these because of the texture of the paper, if we are overlapping we will see some of the colour underneath. So I don't know if I agree with that entirely, um, but I'm going to use the pure white and I'm just going to use the same paintbrush so that is the number three round just gonna make sure it's nice and clean here and uh, we can start on the petals um so far I'm kind of I'm kind of having mixed feelings about this so I'm just going to use I'm going to dip my brush in clean water and then lift some of the the white gouache here and I'm going to start here yeah, so you can see if I zoom in a lot, can you see the texture of the paper there? That is what's causing those marks and I do have quite a dry brush. 
So I'm not entirely sure that I actually want that aesthetic. It's also very difficult to get a clean edge here as well. So what I'm finding is if I keep the brush dry, I'm having to dip back into my paint a lot. Now that is giving me the opacity that I'm looking for, but it makes for very disjointed painting. So although I'm getting some texture here, I'm just not getting the nice crisp clean lines that I want. But you can see the opacity of this one down here. So I'd used a lot more water, I'd mixed it a lot more. And it's given me that sort of slightly more transparent look, which is what I don't want right now. That's kind of the opposite of what I would want. I think this is just going to be about finding the balance between the water content and the consistency. I'm trying to work fairly quickly as well because the more watered down paint, the, you know, the thinner paint that I've mixed on the palette is actually starting to dry out as well. Looks good from a distance though. <laughs> God. Now this is the thing, unless you want a really uneven, wishy-washy background, which is what they're kind of instructing you to do, but what, that, that's not that's clearly not what's happened um, in the tutorial, although that looks like a very matte and flat background to me. I might be mistaken, but the instructions are not necessarily matching up with the illustrations, and I'm willing to bet that they haven't used the artful paper that we are using as well. Yeah, I, I would be lying if I said I knew where I was going with this one, but I'm just going to put it here. Looks about right, so we'll just go with that. Everything will be fine. See, opacity is not what I would have wanted, but in order to get strokes that I wanted, it's kind of had to do it. Okay, right, so now that we've got the white flowers done, mix up your pink tones while you wait for your greens to dry and your whites. Start painting your lighter pink flowers on top of the leaves. Well, I was kind of doing that anyway, to be fair. I used a little yellow ochre when mixing this pink so that the darker pinks would stand out on top. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bit of brush cleaning here. I'm also gonna change my dirty brush water because it's, uh, it's green. All right, so we're gonna mix some pink now. So I have got the raspberry jam, which is one of my favorites. This is, oh, I can't get the lids off. These is are ridiculous. So this is the, I hope you can see that. These are the little black rubber things that I was talking about that are supposed to stay in the cap. And they can be very difficult to remove. And if you try and take them off with your fingers, this happens and you end up with paint everywhere. Don't touch the handles on my paintbrush. I might just super glue them in if I'm honest. Kind of annoying. Anywho, <laughs> I'm gonna pop some pink in here and I'm gonna need a lot more than I think I do. I underestimated both, both times, both times about how much paint I actually needed. And uh, I'm gonna scoop up what's left of this white. I'm gonna see what this does. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so now we've got a ridiculous shade of pink. And uh, let's see, let's see how this goes. That is a really nice colour of pink though. So this is like zero water. I am taking the sacrifice of not being able to manoeuvre the paint as well because I would rather have the opacity. So this is probably going to take me some time, uh, but that's okay. <sighs> that took forever. <laughs> One flower down, two to go. Slowly but surely. I can see more of my pencil marks though with the, the pink, which uh, is quite nice. As I'm sitting here going through this though, I am definitely going to go back over my white flowers. They're not, they're not opaque enough for my liking. And I seem to be finding a groove when it comes to the, the ratio of water to paint here as well. Um, I seem to be I had to have found the sweet spot, as it were. Um, you do need water for mobility. Um, otherwise you get, say, this dry brush and your paint's just not going anywhere. There's there's a bit of a learning curve there with that, but that's okay. That's just something that you've got to go through. But you can see there, this one's drying beautifully. It's still not dry. Um, I'm sure you can see the reflection, but it's uh, it's definitely in terms of the opacity levels. And I, I know I keep banging on about this, but that's the whole point of having gouache. I just feel that even with the slightest drop of water, you seem to lose so much with this paint. It seems to be almost too eagerly soluble if that's such a thing exists. This is a marathon, right? Okay, one more to go. So I'm now going with another layer of white over my, my original petals and I'm using the angled brush for this just because I think I'm gonna get a better line with it. And the answer to that is yes, 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 yes. So you can see the difference just in that one 
petal. Huge difference two layers makes with this particular gouache. Yeah, so if you look at these two white flowers next to this one now, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It, it really is a toss up on whether you want to sit and do this, use more paint, or whether you want to go for that slightly more transparent look. I definitely, now that I've been doing this for a little bit, I feel like my initial reaction of there being a really heavy payoff if you do decide to use even a tiny little bit of water. I do think that these, this particular gouache is, uh, it's a bit too soluble. So the next step is to do the little flowers, which is the red flowers. And apparently we're mixing a tiny bit of white. Back to my three round. It is a bit too much in its raw form, this red colour. It's just a little bit too excitable. I can't actually pick up any of this. There's literally nothing left. So I think I'll just leave that in that pile there. Again, this dries a little bit darker. Gouache usually dries darker than when, than when it's wet. So we need to kind of remember that as well. And I'm gonna take straight off this paintbrush here. That paint actually hasn't fully mixed in and I'm not mad about it. Now see, I have to find these ones. This is the problem. At least I can't put my hand in the white in this one. I can put my hand in everything else, but everything else is dry, so that's okay. I have to say these paints are layering up very nicely. When I'm going over the top of one colour with another, uh, the result is very satisfactory. And the more layers of paint I have, the easier it seems to be to work with the gouache, which is quite interesting in itself. Now, my theory on that is that as we're going along here, obviously we're interrupting the texture of the paper because the knobbly bobbly bits that are in this paper are getting filled up with paint. So the subsequent layers are actually going down a lot smoother because all those knobbles and bobbles are filled in. That is my theory. If anyone wants to suggest otherwise, please feel free in the comments because I always do like a good theory. There we are, even on top of that darker green, that's going down beautifully. Step seven. Okay, so we're up here now. Start adding finer details with yellow ochre tones like the smaller golden colour flowers and the intricate centres of the bigger flowers. So we're doing the, we're doing the centres of the flowers now. I want to take a huge dollop of this pink. That's the colour that we used for the um the big pink flowers. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow ochre to that. Oh, that's right, we don't have yellow ochre. We've got sand. <laughs> Another fight with the lids. That's right, this is like putty, this one, I remember. It's been a week or two since I did the unboxing. Got a short memory for stuff like this. Yeah, the sand colour is really like super, super, super thick. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. So I'm gonna lift a tiny bit of that. Oh, this is a sad state of affairs. And mix this in. Is this gonna be suitably different to our base colour? Probably not, actually. Paint doesn't seem to be mixing very well either. It seems to be taking a lot of work to really mix this together. That ochre does not want to go in there. Oh dear. <laughs> that does not go well at all. Uh, I think I'm okay with the colour difference though, which is good. See, this is the layer that you don't want to be making any mistakes with. And I think I'm gonna put in these little marks here. I'm not, I'm literally just putting them in as little brush strokes rather than making them a specific shape. So far, so good. Okay, so that's given me like a peachy colour. And again, I'm just gonna work off the mixing brush. I seem to be getting on a lot better with that, which is, I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. Okay, so I'm going to reconstitute some of this green now. So you can see that that part's just showing and no more. And these little sort of random leaves that I'm doing. I'm not sure that's enough. I'm not convinced that that's enough. But I've realised that I have missed. Where did I see it? Imagining thing. Yeah, here. So again, just wet my brush a little bit and pick up some of this coral colour again. This is absolutely rock hard, but it's enough for me to do what I need to do. I don't know how big I want these actually. Bigger than that, I think. That big enough? That's better. Okay. <laughs> Happy with that. So much bigger than what I anticipated. I think they just look a bit jollier with the bigger centre. That sounds silly. <laughs> Jolly flowers. And I think they've just used some really fine, I'm going to use the wee teeny tiny brush, I've been really excited about using this and I'm just going to take this sort of peachy ochre colour just to draw in some lines here, oh that's beautiful, I love this brush, oh my goodness I love this brush, could use this all day long for everything. <laughs> 
Oh, I love a good detail brush. Okay, there we go. So finally, finally, we want to put some um, some red dots in here. Oh, 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 that little brush was a delight. So finally, I want to just add in some more petals again. I notice on the finished picture, there's these lighter ones here. So I want to do a little bit of that as well in the spirit of following the tutorial. I have kind of decimated everything. <laughs> I think this may, might be, need to be white with just a hint of green in it. So back with this paintbrush. That's really not much of anything. That's a bit like the, um, yeah, it's a bit like the first layer of white that I did on the, the big white flowers. And I'm not mad about that because we don't want this to be particularly obvious. Okay, um, yeah, I oh, think we'll stop there. I've followed the tutorial, made a mess. Okay, now for the good bit, we get to take the tape off. I did have a, a drip earlier, which I've tried to mop up and it's left me with a, a slightly wonky corner, but I'm okay with that. Look at the paint that's peeling off. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to tip this off. Oh, this washi tape has destroyed this paper. It's not even been on that long. Right, okay, here we go. Got there. There wasn't really any mention of mixing colours for these final details and I think that's something that uh, is a shame because at the beginning of this tutorial they were very good at explaining you know, what types of colours and the fact that you're adding a little bit of the yellow ochre. So I, I feel as if this tutorial was perhaps rushed towards the end. I do think though, even for beginners, I think this is one that is easy to follow. You can get half decent results. For me personally, when it comes to the actual supplies that we've got here. If I was to have a do-over, I would not use the mixed media paper. For the type of results that I want and expect from gouache, I would use a hot pressed watercolour paper, so something really smooth, so you can get that lovely flat matte colour, which is what I've come to expect and what I enjoy about gouache. In terms of mixing and dilution, I find it a little bit awkward and I don't know whether it's because I'm so used to the Winsor & Newton gouache, um, but I had a hard time gauging uh, volumes and dilutions, but also had a hard time finding that balance of opacity versus actually being able to move the move the paint about and I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that this is textured paper. So I would say thumbs up for the tutorial. When I come back to these paints I'm going to use them on my own preference for paper. I love the paint brushes, the paint brushes are great but I don't think the paper's done me any favours here today. I'm quite pleased with the way that this has turned out, it's quite a jolly little picture. Mine isn't quite as, as crowded, sounds like a negative. Um, mine's just not as busy as this because I've space them out a little bit more which is absolutely fine it's absolutely up to you they do leave a lot of room for creative maneuverability in these tutorials which is what I like and I think that's why it appeals to people that are maybe more experienced but for beginners this tutorial in particular I think was very good indeed. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this. The next time we come back to this box I'm going to paint something just for my good little self. So we will go on our own little gouache journey next time. As always comments are welcome down underneath the video. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for coming and hanging out. You know I always appreciate it. Please stay safe and take care of each other and I will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. So have a great day everyone. Bye bye for now.